Right, the final subtopic for today is on the gas turbine design procedure. Um, all of you have already gone through. Eh? We have gone through from 1.1, 1.2, 1.3, 1.4, and 1.5 uh, on the introduction. We only uh, introduced to you what, what is the application, how does it look like in terms of the schematic diagram as well as the uh, real uh, picture, the photo of the engine. And how about, how about the design procedure? Let us see the design procedure for a typical gas turbine. Uh, this can be also applicable for both the aircraft application at the same time for the land-based application. Um, this figure, figure 1.23, uh, will that is showing you a schematic diagram representing a complete design procedure for gas turbine. So later when you see the diagram, it shows the relationship between the thermodynamics, the aerodynamics, mechanical control system design, and emphasizes the need for feedback between various specialists. Uh, just to let you know that the people who design and, uh, the engine is not just a group of uh, uh, people, group of scientists or researchers or engineers even, right? It consists of many departments, right? Uh, department of thermodynamic, department of aerodynamic, the stress, uh, the structures, mechanical and other uh, uh, side. Right? So let us see one by one, a typical gas turbine design procedure, right? Uh, first of all, we start with the specification, right? Specification, you want the engine to produce how many uh, power, the, the, whether it is power or the thrust, right? And then uh, where is it going to be operated? Is it going to be... <coughs> <coughs> Sorry about that, right? Um, of course, uh, when you want to set the specification, you have to do market research. Where, what are the competitors uh, in terms of your uh, engine application? Eh? And then customer requirement, who's going to use or buy your engine? Once you have all that, you're going to do preliminary studies. You need to decide the choice of cycle. Is it an open cycle or closed cycle? the type of turbo, turbo machinery layout you want, whether you are going to decide to use centrifugal type of axial compressor or axial type of compressor or a combination of both. And then you will look at the thermodynamic design studies, right? So thermodynamic design point studies. Okay, so you want to uh, decide the uh, schematic uh, layout of the system, right? And uh, then you go into the aerodynamics of the compressor, uh, how many stages are you going to have the compressor, the pressure ratio, uh, the blade design, uh, turbine, the intake, the exhaust, and uh, etc. Right? And once you have all that, you are going to do the mechanical design, you're going to do the stressing of these, the blades, the casing, vibration, whirling, bearings, and uh, at the same time, the aerodynamic uh, of compressor, right? So you may want to relook back at the mode of re aerodynamics. Let's say it is okay, it is a uh, pass, uh, you can continue for mechanical design. If not, you're going to redo, eh? meaning that the, the cycle will continue here, going back to the thermodynamic design point of studies, right? What happened next for the aerodynamics? You're going to do component tests. Right, component test rig for the compressor, for the turbine, for the combustion. These are being done by different departments. Eh? And it also being feedback to the thermodynamic design point studies. Once everything is clear, okay, you can then, uh, for the mechanical design, we also conduct mode of restressing. Okay, this also being feedback to aerodynamic and the cycle continues, right? Until it is pass all the required tests. At the same time, the thermodynamic design point studies also can be uh, conducted for off-design performance. Eh? For off-design performance, um, where this uh, is the core of the uh, overall uh, design procedures, the main uh, studies, the main fundamentals, the engineering design, uh, 
uh, engineering science uh, being conducted in this particular four uh, steps before you go for the detailed design and manufacture, right? And uh, provide a test and development. Obviously, for test and development, you have a design modes where you feedback it back to the component test rigs and so on. And at the same time, you may also go into the production mode, right? And from the production, also you go for the unrated and modified version. And sometimes it goes back to the thermodynamic design point studies and the cycle continues. Eh? At the same time, for the off design performance, you may also involve control system studies, go for the detailed design and manufacture, and the cycle, small cycle uh, being continued there. For test and development, if it is uh, not really satisfying, it goes back to the detailed design and manufacture. Finally, once you have the production, uh, you have the test, uh, you have the engine uh, which is already been tested, then you provide after sales service. So this is a typical uh, flow of a, a gas turbine design procedure, all right? Uh, probably some of you are very lucky enough uh, to get involved in uh, Rolls-Royce uh, engine design uh, uh, um, activities or Pratt & Whitney or GE, there's not much um, um, engine uh, designer um, all over the world because engine being designed not uh, yearly, it is uh, the, the lifespan for engine is normally more than uh, 20 to 30 years. That's why the, the engine part is the most expensive part on an uh, aircraft. Right? So the evolution of the gas turbine from 1968 to 1993 is shown here in table 1.1. Let I show you the table 1.1. And the power has been increased from 42 um, uh, megawatt to 160 megawatt. Aerodynamic development had allowed the pressure ratio to be raised from 7.5 in the beginning to 14.6 pressure ratio, while improvements in the material and blade cooling permitted increase in the cycle temperature. You can have a much more higher turbine in that temperature. That resulted in thermal efficiency increases from 27.1 to 35.6 percent. So as you can see here, this is quite an old uh, table, but you can see from 1968 until 1993, okay, the power can uh, now increases in terms of the uh, make, uh, power output, the thermal efficiency also able to be increased um, due to the um, more um, <coughs> um, um, alloys being developed, right? new material being, being, being developed, the pressure ratio also being increases, turbine inlet, inlet temperature also be able to be increased uh, due to the uh, efficient uh, cooling of the turbine blades as well as a new material being developed, airflow, right? much more higher airflow in terms of the kilogram per second, the exhaust temperature also can also, also increases number of component of stages of the compressor, okay, uh, uh, also in, uh, being uh, reduces, okay, you do, want, do not want to have much more uh, compressor stages because of the um, um, complexity, right, turbine stages as well as number of cooled row, okay, earlier we have only one uh, turbine stage being cooled, now we can have more than uh, six turbine stages being cooled, right. In summary, before we end our session, okay, uh, we have looked into the uh, investigate the operating principle and application of everything engine, right? You also already look into the um, analyst, analyst, you can also uh, analyze the open cycle, single shaft and twin shaft arrangements. Um, you also look into the multi spool arrangement where you can analyze multi spool arrangement, give reason why is it important, why it is, uh, what are the advantages and disadvantages. And you also be able to identify different type of air breathing um, engine for aircraft propulsion, right? And finally, you also being exposed to the uh, gas turbine design procedure. Eh? So um, that is all uh, for today.
with that thank you very much have a, a good day yeah? uh, and stay safe assalamualaikum warahmatullahi taala wabarakatuh Waalaikumsalam. Thank you, Dr. Yeah, thank, thank you, Dr. Thank you, Dr. Thank you, Dr.